Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm VDB and I'm a grown man right in my middle age crisis and I want a backhoe. Can I afford a brand new one? Yes. Can I hide it from my wife so that she won't be able to link that brand new piece of equipment with the huge chunk of money missing from our savings? <laughs> no. Can I design and build one this summer? Because I needed to do some landscaping ASAP. Well, I guess. So this is my design. And nope, I didn't reinvent the wheel because I inspired myself from existing backhoes like the Kubota BH92. From my understanding, this backhoe is made for bigger tractors than mine, so I scaled down my version just a bit. I also measured and took pictures of multiple other equipments from smaller backhoes to mini excavators. My backhoe version has a max digging depth of 92 inches, a max reach of 120, 170 degrees of rotation, and it's perfect for subtractors of 25 horsepower and above. So the game plan is to build this backhoe. Uh, it's gonna be like a prototype so I can improve on my final design. Cause yep, I'm planning on saving the plans and the extra files of this project for only 50 bucks. Although all the plans are done, I'm not selling them until I'm done with the testing phase. But I'll put a link in this video description to my Etsy store and my website. So if you do find the plans for sale, it means that the testing is done and that I'm confident that this is the best design and product that I could offer you. All right, speaking of build time, this design is made probably 95% of laser cutted parts, reducing by a lot the fabrication time. I also try to include as many mortise tenons as I could, speeding up the assembly process and reducing the guesswork. Okay, let's talk pricing. But how much is it gonna cost me? Well, it should cost you about a third of a same size brand new backhoe from a company like Coyote or maybe even Kubota. But keep in mind that, yeah, to keep the price down, I'm using cheaper, low cost of the shelf parts like the hydraulic spool valves and cylinders. So if you're looking for a piece of equipment to work day in and day out, this is not the right project for you. And you should get a backhoe from any tractor brand. But if you're like me and you need something to work on your landscape from time to time, this is the real deal. So let me know if you have any questions regarding this backhoe. And now I think we should start building something. All right, my English is getting better with time, but it's still kind of hard to do comments on the spot while I'm building stuff. So here I'm trying to explain how easy it would have been if I had built myself a pallet fork attachment for my tractor. Since in my last episode, I built myself a quick attach system for my front loader and that all the cutted parts are already on a skid. But instead, I made noises. Well, it is what it is. That's for the stick. Way bigger than I thought. <laughs> what am I building? Main boom. Or it's a boomerang! Yeah. Yeah. Hope that the designer knows what he's doing because uh, as of right now for my little tractor, it looks kind of big. All right, shut up, Vinny. It's going to be just fine. On that note, let me introduce the partner for this build. Are you looking for new challenges? If so, Conceptromec, the partner of this build, is currently hiring. They are located in the Eastern Township in Quebec and has specialized in robotic and automated machines for the automotive industry for more than 35 years. So if you're a mechanical or electrical designer or engineer, a mechanic, an electrician or a machinist, and you're interested in working in a dynamic and collaborative environment, I put the link below so you can send them your resume. Thanks again Conceptromec for the partnership and yeah, it feels like Christmas because I do have some gifts to unwrap. After unpacking all the laser cutted parts, I already started making changes in the plans because maybe, just maybe, I messed up some quantities for some parts and I'm missing some now. It's another good reason why I'm not selling the plans right away. Excellent. Now, I think we do need to fab some parts and I'm gonna start with a jig and some pivot housing. There's 
no chance it's gonna get in. There's a two thou of interference. Excellent. All right, so this is the base of the backhoe. There's a crucial part that I need to fabricate, which needs to be perfectly aligned. Let me show you with a 3D. So this is the main pivot, the main swing of the boom, and it is made of two main sections. There's the top and the bottom one. And these two sections, yeah, they need to be perfectly aligned or as close as I can get them. To do so, I machine myself this. It's, uh, let's call it a dog bone, since these two sections are a little bit thicker than the middle one. So this dog bone will help me align the two drill bushing housings. So, you put, yeah, one here and the other one at the bottom. So I'm going to use this to align the two housings and then weld everything rock solid. So hopefully this thing uh, will be fairly straight. Well, anyway, it's going to be the best I can do. All right, back to the fab. So I just put some uh, quarter inch shims and have a bottom plate. And now I can slide in the two bushing housings with the dog bone. Okay, I might oversimplify the assembly process of the base, but with the mortise tenon I put in the design, it's yeah, really simple. Keep in mind though that I did need to prep the parts a bit, because even if the laser cut quality is yeah, pretty close to perfect, sometimes it will leave a small burr and with that outgrowth, the parts won't align properly. Nice. All right, so for the other side, I changed my approach. You see the bottom face of those two brackets are perfectly aligned. Also, same thing with the bushings. So I clamp everything together on a flat surface and yeah, everything lined up perfectly. That's great. And what I'm trying to do is to weld that unit in and hopefully it's gonna be quicker and I will still have that 20 degrees that I need from the front plate of that backhoe base. And yeah, hopefully everything once welded will be exactly where they need to be. All right, let's see if it works. Right on the money. Oh yeah. Yeah, these are some of the parts that I forgot or messed up the quantity, so luckily I can use my homemade CNC plasma table. I often use these precision squares to quickly make myself some welding jigs. It makes for a better, faster and repeatable work for small parts. I'm kind of covered with these squares and all the shins and one to three blocks that I'm using. However, when I need to build bigger parts like a tubing frame, yeah, I'm kind of screwed with my setup. So maybe I really don't know when I'm going to design and build myself one of those, uh, let's call it Swiss cheese welding table, uh, just like the one Fireball's tooling is selling, but just, you know, custom made for my shop. So if you have any good suggestions or reference regarding this kind of welding tables, uh, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, merci. Th thank you.
Great, all the parts are tacked in. Let's fully weld it. All right, so another crucial step done. The base is fully welded and apparently the alignment of the two housings bushing seems pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. Now the next step, the two uh, housing bushings are only tacked in, so I will need to carefully weld them fully on both sides and using the torch I will eat them up uh, so they will a little bit expand and then I will call somebody from the house uh, so that they can bring me the two drill bushings which I put in the freezer a couple days ago so hopefully uh, it's gonna be a slight fit with the housing heated up and the drill bushing being cold uh, but I never done this before so we'll see <laughs> hey all right let's weld those in let's go Apparently, the dog bone expanded more than the housings from the welding heat. But I managed to get it out. There we go. And then I took my torch out and... Watch this gauge. Yeah, you're hearing the blow-off valve going on because I'm reaching 100 psi, which is a good thing to have. So I know the blow-off valve works. Yay! Yeah, that's uh, that's Murphy's law, right? So I've got a blown seal somewhere in this gauge, uh, which I fixed the next week. But at the time, I couldn't find a problem, so I made do with what I had. Yep. Kinda sucks. Yeah, there was no chance that this little torch could bring enough heat to expand that chunk of metal. But I thought I'd give it a try and it was time to make the call. Uh, okay. One long angry line later. Yes, Not gonna lie, the second try was as bad. This is definitely not the right way to do it, but that's the way. Ah. After that misfortune, I decided to machine the pins that will pivot in these drill bushings. And the steel I had on hand was already hardened. So I fabricable myself a grinding lathe, uh, made a short about it, and boy did I get mean comments on this one. So yes, 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 for those of you who want to know, I bought some ceramic inserts. I'm waiting for them to arrive and I'll give it a try. Uh, by the way, you can stop right now worrying about those ways on the lathe because they're far gone and it's been a while. Yeah, this whole machine is at its final stage. Once I machined the pins to the right diameter, I added a zerk to grease the bushings with the pin. That implies messing around once again with the hardened skin. And I'm not gonna lie again, I broke a bunch of end mills. And you little one, let's join the party. Next, I started build a pivot base. I made sure to put a nice chamfer everywhere I knew the hydraulic hoses would rub against the edges. After machining a bunch of bushings and washers, it was time to put together the pivot base. Hey, almost done. There we 
go. So I want the pin to move with the pivot base. So that's why there's a plate with that hole. Let's get that tapped in first. But for now, pretty smooth. Okay, here I'm explaining some really technical things about shims and bushings and it was getting quite boring since, as you all know, I'm not that good with comments on the spot. And also because I know that some of you are here just for the dick jokes and not the technical part. Yeah, you, you know who you are. For these reasons, I decided to do instead this voiceover, which is getting longer than the explanation itself. Yeah. Anyway, uh, getting back to the subject and to simplify it, here I'm just explaining that I put wearable truster washers between the pivot and the base. Some have grooves to be greased and other will be grindable to finalize the fit after welding. And that was it. You might guessed it already, but I used the base as a jig to weld the pivot and make sure that everything lines up perfectly. After that, I was ready for a little test. Alright, so it's the end of this episode. Yeah, I know, I know that was quick. But side note, I'm already done building the backhoe and maybe about halfway testing it. I did change major components down the road, but I won't tell you which one it is because you're gonna have to wait for the next part. And with that, the plan should be out for sale pretty soon. Again, the link downstairs. Also, my good buddy Austin Coulson released his ice cream truck build, which he did from an old pickup truck front end and a school bus. Seriously guys, he's an amazing builder and I cannot recommend you enough to have a look at his channel. So I put a link downstairs to his stuff and I, yeah, I think we're gonna hand with a man boobs bump. And yeah, you could subscribe. If you wanted to, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm not your mom, I think. Son?